Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and in this video, I wanna talk about the seven steps to turning around a team with low morale. And really, uh, this is kind of a blueprint for creating a culture that has high morale and a culture of winning on any team. So if you're seeing this video right now, it's probably because you have a morale problem on your team. <laughs> so maybe you took over a team with low morale. Maybe you got promoted above your peers and now they're frustrated about that. Uh, maybe you're a leader and you realize that over the course of months, you haven't been leading well. <laughs> and now your team is burnt out. They're frustrated. They're down in the dumps. They're feeling discouraged. Maybe this was an acquisition. And again, this is a new team and they're frustrated that you're there. Whatever the reason, you're here. You've got a team with low morale. You got to fix this because morale and culture and building a culture of winning, like all those things, if your team does not have that, there's, it doesn't matter what else you do. Like you've got to build this, you've got to turn this around right now and I'm walk you through the seven steps on how to do that. Now, the first step in the place I always start is to address or remove diminishers and energy vampires, okay? Now, there's multiple books that talk about kind of these concepts, um, but chances are you've got a diminisher or you've got maybe a bad apple or an energy vampire. So an energy vampire is someone who sucks the energy out of the room. So maybe they're negative, maybe they're always complaining, uh, maybe they're on meetings uh, and they're always bringing the team down. Uh, and so you need to address that head on. Now, I, I might not start with that publicly or any of those things, but you need to address those folks and either help them improve or remove them from the team. Now, maybe you're, you're getting into this team and you just realize, hey, this person is not going to change. They're not interested in, in changing any of those things. Then you need to prune that person from the team. And because I've seen this happen with me, you know, I ran a painting company in college. It was an exterior house painting company. Uh, and I had one energy vampire or diminisher, I'd call him a bad apple, um, but you know, there was, there was a lot of rain, the, the guys weren't getting much work and hours and things like that. And I thought early on, I'm thinking, you know, this person is, is really bringing the team down. And I was like, but it's okay, it's okay. He's a pretty good painter, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And so I let this person's performance outweigh uh, the fact that they were a diminisher. And that is a classic mistake and a mistake that you do not wanna make. This is because this person might also be a top performer, but you have to address it and you have to prune if necessary, no matter how well they perform. Because guess what happened for me? Is, you know, In the hot days, the long days of the summer, uh, my team, they're painting houses and this person's just in their ear complaining. This, this sucks. sucks, this, this job, job sucks, sucks. I, don't I don't like this. this. Chandler, Chandler isn't, isn't he a, a jerk? jerk? He's a horrible he's boss. boss, he's not really that organized. organized. You know, all those things just start chirping in the ears of my other painters and, and not before long, uh, I come back and half of my team quit. Right, so that was, you know, that's one of those lessons that you only learn once. <laughs> and that's that if you do not address or remove the energy vampire, the diminisher, the bad apple on your team, you're gonna end up with half or maybe even more of your team quitting, or you're just gonna, maybe worse. They don't quit, but they perform at a low level uh, and they just continue to underperform. So that's the first step. Number two is to build a culture of winning. Now this is very important. You've got to start sharing wins. You've got to start celebrating wins. And more importantly, you've got to get your team to start celebrating and sharing those wins, okay? Now I like to embed this on meetings. I like to embed this in Slack, which is a communication tool that we use. We have a wins channel. We have a positive feedback channel. Uh, sometimes on our daily huddles, I'll, I'll kind of embed this there. I'll say, hey, what's one thing you appreciate about someone on the team? And we'll just go round robin. Or what's one win from this last week? What's good news? We start every meeting with good news and with business and personal wins from the last week. And if someone isn't sharing a win, I'm gonna address that and say, hey, that's not a win. Let's hear a real win. <laughs> and that's just a great way to, if you have someone who's kind of in that bad mindset or they're bringing down the team or maybe they're just in a tough spot, like this is a really difficult situation and they hesitate to bring wins, I'm gonna make sure that they bring wins and I'm gonna call attention to the wins every chance that I get. Because what's happened is if you got low morale, people feel like they're losing, they feel like they're overstretched, they're, they're stretched thin, maybe they're burnt out, all those things. So you've gotta slowly start building brick by brick a culture of winning and a culture of, oh, we set this goal and we hit this goal. Uh, and you've got to lead from the front. So this means every day, every meeting, you're always calling out, hey, I appreciate this about you. Hey, let's celebrate this win. Let's celebrate this milestone. Oh my gosh, look how much we improved over the last week. It feels like every week we're just getting better. And so you are that voice of celebrating and sharing wins on your team. Number three, affirmation and appreciation. And this really starts with you. You've got to show affirmation and give affirmation. So it's kind of just talking about this, but also show appreciation 
for your team. This is one of my favorite quotes. And really, if you haven't read this book, you gotta read this book. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's just a classic book. I reread that book uh, once a year or once every other year. But in that, he says, be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. And this is so important that you need to do this lead from the front is show appreciation and show affirmation to your team. And that's how you're going to start to turn around this morale. Number four, positive reinforcement. And really, this is a concept we call positive narration. So I learned this from someone on my team at Self Publishing School. Uh, He used to be a teacher. He said, you know, here's what you do. So if if you've got a class of 30 kids and, and this class is just acting up, there, there's horrible behavior, all those things, but you got a couple kids that are doing really well. There's two ways that you can attack this problem. You can just continuously reprimand the kids who aren't behaving. That was me growing up as a kid, and I had teachers always telling me the things that I was doing wrong, right? And that usually doesn't work. Or you can point to the kids who are doing things right, and it's called positive narration. So you're calling attention to the behaviors and activities that you want to see more of. Right? So you're saying, oh man, I really love how Tommy cleans up his workspace after he's done. Right, That's a school example. But in the business example or on a team example is, oh man, really want to shout out Leo for just bringing the energy every single day. He's positive, he's uplifting, he's upbeat. Right? I want to shout out Michael um, for just creating systems, improving systems, being a systems thinker. So I'm bringing attention, I'm bringing positive narration to the things that I want to see more of. And guess what? As soon as you, what you appreciate will expand. And as you appreciate those things, and as you uh, practice positive narration, more people are going to do those things because you're calling attention to those things. And I know uh, when teachers took the opposite approach with me and they said, Chandler, you're a leader. Like I see these skill sets in you is that the the class looks to you and you can really lead this class. And I want you to lead this class. I I was always thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, I am a leader. I do need to lead the class. And guess what? Now all of a sudden I'm performing better (laughs) Uh, in in my day-to-day activities in the classroom. But also that's one of my favorite things to do as a leader is I say, hey, I really see this in you. You have the opportunity to help other people improve and people look to you. So I need you to perform better or I need you to do this thing because when you do that, other people are going to look and other people are going to follow. So not only is that positive narration on a kind of a one-on-one level to that person, I'm uplifting that person, I'm encouraging them, I'm affirming them, but I'm also empowering them to help the people around them get better. And that's really how you turn around a low morale team is inside out right? I can talk until I'm blue in the face, but if I don't get buy-in from people on the team and if I don't get them to challenge the people around them, then the team's not going to grow, the team's not going to develop, and morale's not going to turn around. Number five, hold people accountable. This is super important, and you might want to shy away from this if you're you're taking over a team and they have low morale. And kind of human instinct is, oh man, I don't want to correct people (laughs) or I don't want to challenge them because then maybe that's just going to frustrate them or demoralize them more. Um, But it's super important that you challenge and hold people accountable. And specifically, you know, maybe you've heard the saying, praise in public, reprimand in private. I think that's so true. And I've already talked about the praise in public and positive narration, all those things. But I believe here it's important when you hold people accountable that you publicly set the standard you privately reprimand, okay? So if this is on a meeting, if this is uh, in a Slack channel, if this is anywhere, I'm publicly setting the standard. So I'll call attention to the group behavior that's not okay or the group behavior that needs to change without picking on one individual person. So I'll say, hey guys, we really need to bring more energy on our meetings. Or hey guys, we really need to come more prepared to these meetings, or hey, guess what? I noticed that some people are missing appointments or showing up late for appointments with customers. That is not okay, that is not acceptable, that's not something that we do. We need to improve on that thing. So I'm publicly setting the standard, I'm letting the group know this is what I expect, and then privately, I will reprimand those folks on that specific activity. So hey, so-and-so, you're showing up for meetings late, you're missing meetings with clients and with customers, that's not okay. Or hey, I need specifically, again, this is where you can reprimand, but also you can encourage and say, hey, you need to do this thing better, and guess what? I see you as a leader on this team. I see you as someone who can really set the standard for the rest of the team in this way. So you're privately reprimanding and holding people accountable, but you're also giving life and encouraging them in ways that they can bring morale and bring energy to the rest of the team. Number six, bring the energy. (laughs) Okay, so if you're on a low morale team, 
chances are there's low energy and that's part of, you know, it's whether that's correlation or causation, that's part of the problem that you have here with low morale. So it's important that you bring the energy to every interaction. Now you might be thinking, I'm an introvert. I do not naturally do that. Or Chandler, I'm a lower energy person. I'm not you. <laughs> I'm not like this high energy uh, type A like type of person. Doesn't matter. You've got to bring the energy. If you are not bringing energy to your meetings, to your interactions, then other people aren't going to have energy. Uh, and it's important. I do this. I call attention to this. So I'll bring the energy on the meeting. But also, if people are low energy, I hold people accountable on that. And I make micro corrections. Say, hey, guys. Uh, I'll say, you know, sometimes I say, it's like, feels like someone just died. <laughs> like we, there's no energy on this meeting. Let's go. All right, let's pick up the pace and let's move. Clap my hands. Like, let's go. We need to pick up the energy. We need to bring the energy here. We are, and I'll remind them of the, why we're doing what we're doing. I'll remind them of the core values. And I'll say, Hey guys, this is one of the most important meetings or roles in this company is we are helping our customers succeed or we, we are helping bring in new customers, whatever it is. I'm going to find a way to relate that back to the mission and why this is arguably one of the most important things that we're doing. So we need to act that way. We need to bring the energy. We need to bring the passion uh, and we need to bring the focus. And we're not doing that right now. So I'm bringing the energy, but I'm also making a micro con correction to the team and helping them bring the energy. Number seven, paint a picture for a brighter tomorrow. Um, so you can do all the things that I said. And if people don't see the future, tomorrow or their future a month from now or three months from now or whatever, if they don't see that as getting better, they're not going to be encouraged. It's like, oh yeah, this, I've, I've seen this song and dance multiple times. Um, so if they don't believe that tomorrow can be better and there's a high likelihood that it will be better, then they have nothing to work towards. So it's your job as a leader. And I've, I've missed on this in the past. It's like, I lose sight of this uh, is you got to paint that picture. And that again is your job as a leader. So you got to let people know, Hey, I see this, this is going to get better. Hey, th this is gonna be a really tough three months, but then if we stick to it guys, and this is the time where leaders are made, this is the time where top performers are made. And I said, kind of bring that rally cry back and say, Hey, we're working towards something. This is going to get better. And here's what I see for this. Here's what I see in you. Here's what I see in this team. Here's what I see where we can make things better. Right. And if I don't bring that vision, then there's, there's a void. And that's your job as leaders to bring the vision and, and not expect the people on your team to see that vision. But maybe they see that vision, but maybe they don't. And there's a, probably a big correlation to the lack of vision and the lack of morale because they don't see that brighter tomorrow. And again, it's your responsibility as a leader to paint that picture. So there you have it. Those are the seven steps to turning around a team with low morale or really how to build a culture of winning, build a high morale, high team culture, all those things, any team, any company. I hope that you found this video helpful. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Scroll below this video right now, comment. What was your biggest takeaway from this video? Or maybe out of the seven things that I listed, what's the one area that you need to work on? Okay, so the one area that you're going to use and instill in your team and help turn around that morale or build on that morale uh, with your team, let me know in the comments. Seriously, take two minutes right now. Comment on the video. I read and respond to every single comment, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your takeaways, all right? As always, click the like button on this video. Click the subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the 7 Figure Principles podcast, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.